What's going on everybody? This week we're going to give a rundown of our solar system. We've had it installed on a boat for about two years now, so that's quite a bit of time with it. And I figured it was about time to let you all know how our system was set up. So let's dive in. So here we are up on the roof, better known as the hardtop of our Sea Ray 480 sedan bridge. We have four six and a half feet by three foot three inch wide solar panels that are 350 watts each for a total of 1.4 kilowatts or 1400 watts. They're wired in parallel because I knew that one way or the other we'd always have some sort of shadow based on the sun's position and the boat's position, so I didn't want one shadow to severely restrict the amount of voltage being supplied to the boat. Therefore, I wired it in parallel as opposed to series, and so far, I've been happy with that decision. Okay, let's jump down to this midnight solar combiner box that I have mounted upside down inside the helm console. It houses four 15 amp breakers for each of the panels, as well as a 40 amp breaker between the combiner and the charge controller. There's a positive and negative wire that goes down into the engine room, over to the port side, and up to the charge controller, which is mounted behind the salon seating. I have the display for the charge controller mounted just above. I'll show you that in a second. But this solar charge controller regulates the voltage and the amperage based on the battery state of charge, as well as a couple other parameters. From here, I have the wires that lead to the battery bank with a 150 amp breaker on the positive side and a funky little doohickey on the negative side. This doohickey is called the Whizbang Junior. It's a sensing model that collects readings from the shunt and provides the data to the charge controller so it can perform accordingly. So here's the display for the charge controller. You can see it's in float mode. The batteries are fully charged at 12.1 to 12.2 volts. So the solos are only bringing in about 5 amp hours because we're plugged in the short power. But at peak sun, we can bring in over 70 amp hours in ideal conditions. We've seen the average about 60 amp hours during the bulk phase. Moving along to our house battery bank, we have four 6 volt Trojan T45 deep cycle batteries. This little guy is a temperature sensor and it can be connected to either the charge controller or the inverter. And that's that for our solar setup. We also upgraded our inverter to a Magnum 300 watt 12 volt inverter charger and here's the, the display for that. This thing is pretty comprehensive as well just like the, uh, the charge controller and they sell modules that will start your generator for you if your battery bank gets too low. There's tons of things that the, uh, this inverter can do with the, ma the Magnum system so I won't go over all of that. But if you're interested, check it out. I have that as well as all the other equipment mentioned down in the description. So check that out if you want more information on that. You know, if we were to do anything else to change our system, I think it would be to upgrade our current battery bank to a lithium battery bank. Granted, the batteries that we have, they, they suited us well. But I think that maybe just a battery bank that we can drain a little lower and charge at a, a faster rate would, would do us well. In the summer, we did have to generate for about 30 to 40 minutes just to top off the batteries in the evening so that we had enough power to get us through the night until the, uh, the sun would come up and top off the batteries in the morning. But that was fine because we have an electric stove, so we generally cooked for about that time anyways on the, uh, on the electric stove or in the convection oven. So that was fine. In the, in the winter months though, I was worried that with less sun, we'd probably have to run the generator more than what we did in the summer. But what I found out is that we didn't have to run the generator. We could go a few days without having to run the generator at all. But, you know, of course we cooked, so we, we did it anyways, at least on, on some days. Other days we'd grill and we just wouldn't generate at all and run strictly off of solar. What happens is in the summer, the refrigerator is running 24 seven and the solar panels just couldn't keep up. But in a winter months, it would, it would cycle on and off, and you know, just that small change was enough for the uh, the solar system to keep up with keeping the batteries topped off without needing to to run the generator. 
Well, that's all I've got. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like it. I'm not sure if I'll get another one out next week because I want to hurry up and get that Dry Tortugas video finished. It's our last video for Dry Tortugas and I want to hurry up and get our storyline caught up. Um, but I don't know, maybe if, maybe if this video could get 50 likes, I'll release both the Tipsy Tuesday video and the Dry Tortugas video next week. And if the video could get 100 likes before the week's over, maybe I'll work a little harder and release the Dry Tortugas video this week. I, it's up to you. Uh, but I will let the likes dictate how fast I get the next videos out. And I guess we'll see you then.